Hello everyone! In this Mechanics and Strength of Materials lecture, we explain how to draw shear force and bending moment diagrams by hand. In this lecture, we explain the procedure in the case of a single concentrated force or concentrated load that acts at the single point of a simply supported beam shown in this figure. Here is a problem formulation. Consider a simply supported beam with a concentrated force F acting at the distance A from the point capital A. Under the assumption that the distances A, B, L, as well as the magnitude of the force F are known, draw shear force and bending moment diagrams of the beam. To solve this problem, we first need to construct a free body diagram of our beam. We construct the free body diagram by first removing the supports at the point A and at the point B. Instead of these supports, we need to add reaction forces. At the point A, we need to add a vertical reaction force. Let's call this reaction force by RA. And we have a horizontal reaction force. And let's call this reaction force as RAX. On the other hand, at the point B, we have only a vertical reaction force, RB. And then, don't forget to add the external force F. Here it is. This is the final form of the free body diagram. Let's continue. The next step is to determine the reaction forces. We determine the reaction forces by using the static equilibrium equations. Let's start. The static equilibrium force equation tells us that the sum of all the forces acting on the beam should be equal to zero. We write this equation like this, sum, where I goes from 1 to N, of Fi is equal to zero. Here, n is the total number of forces. Let's see, what do we have over here? We have Rax plus Ra plus Rb plus F is equal to zero. Note over here that this should be a vector equation. This is very important to keep in mind. Okay, let's project this equation onto the horizontal and vertical axis. Let's introduce these axes. This will be x-axis and this will be y-axis. By projecting this equation onto the x-axis, we obtain that Rax is equal to zero. Here, Rax is actually the intensity of the R rix vector. Okay, so we don't have the rix, rax force. It's equal to zero. Then, by projecting this equation onto the y-axis, we obtain, let's see, ra with a positive sign minus f minus, or actually plus, rb is equal to zero. And from this equation, we obtain that Ra plus Rb is equal to F. And here is our first equation. Over here, we actually have two unknowns. Consequently, we cannot solve for Ra and Rb. We need an additional equation. We need an additional equation to solve for Ra and Rb. This is the so-called moment equation. The static equilibrium moment equation tells us that the sum of moments of all the forces around any point in this plane should be equal to zero. So let's write this equation. Mathematically, this equation looks like this. Sum, I goes from 1 until capital N, where N is the total number of forces, mi, that is the moment, for the point, and here we have a freedom to select the point, 
let's select this point A, should be equal to zero. Let's write the moment equation. Let's start from here. To write the moment equation, we need to introduce the convention for the moment. The convention for the moment will be that the moments or the couples that are acting counterclockwise are positive and the other ones are negative. So we can write RB and here we need to remember the geometry. This length over here is L and this length over here that is from the force RA to the line of action of the force F is actually A. Now we can write RB multiplying L. This is the moment of the force RB for the point A. And over here we have minus F multiplying A. We have a minus sign since the moment of the force F acts clockwise and this should be equal to zero. From this equation, we obtain that RB is actually F multiplying A over L. And this is our first reaction force. How about RA? We can determine RA from this equation. Namely, from this equation, we can write RA is F minus RB. And let's substitute RB from this equation inside of this equation. So we obtain F minus F A over L. From this equation, we have that these two terms can be written like this. 1 minus A over L multiplying the force F or over here we will have L, F, and we will have L minus A. Now, let's go back to this graph and let's recall the distances. This distance over here from the action line of the force F until the action line of the force RB is actually B. And we can see that L minus A, that is this distance, minus this distance is actually B. Consequently, RA is L minus A is actually B over L multiplying F. And that's it. This is our force RA. And we are done. We have successfully determined the reaction forces RA and RB, and we can proceed further. Next, in order to construct internal shear force and internal bending moment diagrams, we need to introduce the sign convention for these quantities. This figure over here shows a cross-section of our beam with the internal shear force V and with the internal bending moment M or the bending couple M. If the internal shear force V is oriented like this, then its sign is positive, and if the internal bending moment acts like this, that is, if it, if it acts in the counterclockwise direction, then its sign is positive. To construct shear force and bending moment diagrams, we need to define the two cross sections that are shown over here. This will be our first cross section, and this will be the second cross section. The distance of cross section 1 from the point A is x over here and the distance of the cross section 2 from the point or better to say from the action line of the force F will be x. Okay, let's start with the first cross section. Imagine that we have scissors and that we can cut the beam over here. The result will look like this. This will be our beam. Let's extend it and let's imagine that we cut the beam over here. Let us consider everything on the left-hand side 
from this cross-section. What do we have? We have the force RA and the distance of this cross-section from the point A is X. Now, the main question is, is this piece of the beam in the static equilibrium? Obviously, it's not. This is because we have only the force RA. Consequently, we need to add something over here to make sure that this piece of beam is in the static equilibrium. Obviously, we need to add an internal force V that will counteract this force. Let's add it over here. And do we need to add something else? Well, we can see that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. However, the sum of the forces is only a necessary condition for the static equilibrium. Another equation needs to be, needs to be satisfied. That equation is the moment equation. Is the sum of the moment for any point of all the forces equal to zero? Well, it's not. We can see that since if we write the moment equation for this equation, we will have minus v multiplying x, and this is not equal to zero. Consequently, we need to add an internal bending moment that will counteract the moment from the internal force v, and here it is, m. And now the system can be in the static equilibrium. To repeat, v and m are the internal force and the internal moment that need to be added to this beam, or better to say to the section of this beam, such that this section is in the static equilibrium. And we want to determine V and M. Let's write the static equilibrium force equation. Here we need to follow the sign convention for the internal force V. That is, the positive sign will be in the direction of V. So we can write V minus RA is equal to zero. From this equation, we obtain that RA is equal to V, or V is equal to RA. That is, V is equal to... From the computation of the reaction forces, it follows that RA is equal to B over L multiplying F, and consequently, V is equal to B over L multiplying F. Okay. Next, let's write the static equilibrium moment equation. And let's write this equation for the point A. And again, we need to follow the sign convention previously introduced. If a moment is acting in this direction, that is, in the counterclockwise, the moment is positive. Consequently, we have M minus, let's see what do we have over here, V multiplying X and this should be equal to zero. From this equation, it follows that m is v multiplying x, that is, m is equal to x multiplying b over l multiplying f, where we simply substituted v from this equation in this equation. And now we have the internal force v and the internal moment m. Perfect. Let's continue to the cross-section number two. Again, imagine that we have scissors and that we can cut the beam over here. And we consider everything on the left-hand side of this cross-section. Let's sketch our beam. Here's our beam. And here's our cut. Add all the forces, couples, that are left-hand side from this cross-section. Here's the force F. Then we have RA over here. This distance, that is the distance from RA to the action line of F, is actually A. And the distance from the action line of the force F until the cross-section number 2 is actually X. Again. 
This system might not be in the static equilibrium and consequently over here in this cross section we need to add internal forces and internal moments. Again, let's add the internal force F in the V actually, this is the internal force V in the positive direction and let's add the internal moment M or the internal couple M in the positive direction. Okay. Next, we need to write the two static equilibrium equations. The first equation is the static equilibrium force equation. We have the sum of all the forces acting on this beam should be equal to zero. After we write the equation and after we project the equation, we will obtain the following equation. We will obtain V minus RA plus F should be equal to zero. And keep in mind here that we are following the sign convention V. That is, if the forces are acting like this, they are positive, otherwise they are negative. From this equation, we can find V. V will be RA minus F. And if we substitute the values, we will have, instead of RA, we can write B over L multiplying F, and we derive this expression for RA while computing the reaction forces, and we have minus F. Now, this equation can be written like this. We will have F outside of the parentheses, and inside we will have B over L minus 1. We can further simplify this equation. We will have L over here, B minus L, multiplying F. And from this graph, we can see that B minus L is actually minus L minus B. Let me write it down over here. This is actually minus L, L minus B, multiplying F. And we can see over here that L minus B is actually A. Consequently, V becomes minus A multiplying F over L. Next, let's write the static equilibrium moment equation for the point A. And let's follow the sign convention for the internal moment M. That is, the moments will be positive if they act counterclockwise. Let's see what do we have. Sum of all the moments for this point should be equal to zero. Let's see. We have M, and M acts in a positive direction. Then, the moment of the force V is negative, and the distance is A plus X. So, we'll, we will have here negative A plus X multiplying the force V. And we will have the moment from the force F. Obviously, the moment from the force F will be negative, and the intensity of the moment is A multiplying F. And this should be equal to zero. From this equation, we see that M is equal to A plus X multiplying V plus AF. Let's substitute the value from, for V from this equation. So we obtain minus sign, and we have A plus X multiplying AF over L. And over here we will have plus AF. From this equation, we can obtain the moment M. The moment M is equal to L minus A minus X over L multiplying AF. Now we are ready to construct the internal shear force and the internal bending moment diagrams. To do that, it's always a good idea to write once again the derived equations. Here are the equations for the internal shear force and the internal bending moment for the two cross sections. Let's start 
with the internal shear force diagram. Let's extend the lines. Okay. And this line will represent zero for the internal shear force. From this equation, we can observe that the internal shear force is constant and equal to B over L multiplying F. Consequently, over here in this section, we will have a constant internal shear force. And the intensity of this force will be V is equal to B over L multiplying F. Then, let's observe what's happening in this section. In this section, the internal shear force is constant and negative and equal to minus A over L multiplying F. Consequently, over here we will have minus A over L multiplying F. And this is the internal shear force diagram. Now, let me teach you a few things over here. We are jumping here from zero to this value of the internal force, and this value of the internal force is precisely our force Ra. And consequently, it's always a good idea to write down the force. This force will be Ra. Then, what's happening over here? We are jumping from the value of B over L multiplying F to minus A over L multiplying F. And this jump toward down is due to this force F. That is, we can simply add the force F. And now, what's happening over here? We are jumping from this negative value to zero. And this is because of this force RB. And consequently, you can sketch RB over here. The internal force diagram should start from zero and should end at zero. Next, let's construct the internal moment diagrams. We need to focus first of all on this equation in section one. We can see that the internal bending moment is actually a linear function with respect to x, where x is this distance. Consequently, over here we will need to sketch a linear function. Let's do that. This line over here will represent zero internal moment. Next, let's sketch the moment in the cross section one. For that purpose, I will simply change the color and let's continue. As mentioned previously, m is a linear function of x. When x is 0, we are actually at 0. When x over here is equal to a, that is, when we are over here, then the moment will become, let's write it like this, m of a will be a multiplying b over l multiplying f. And this value will correspond to this value. Now we need to draw a straight line. That is, this is the line connecting this point and this point of the maximum over here, where the value of the moment over here is A multiplying B over L F. Okay, let's see what's happening in the section 2. The moment equation is given over here. We can see that the moment equation is again a linear function of x. And the slope is negative. Let's see from where this moment equation starts. When x is equal to 0, we are actually on this line over here. So let's see what happens. m of 0 is actually l minus a divided by l multiplying a f. From this graph over here, we can see that L minus A is actually B. So this is actually equal to A, B, F over L. And that's precisely this point over here. That is, the moment starts from this line, and let's see where it ends. 
the end should be when x is equal to b. When x is equal to b, we will have l minus a minus b over l multiplying af, and since l is a plus b, this is equal to zero. And consequently, we end at zero. This is a linear function, and let me sketch this linear function, and here it is. It might not look linear on this graph, however, it's a linear function. And this is our internal bending moment diagram. That's it. Now, let's verify these graphs. How to verify them? There are several approaches. We have already verified that the moment equation is correct. Why is that? Well, we have seen that when we substitute in this cross section the end point, that is when we substitute x for a, we will obtain this value of the moment. And this corresponds to here. Now, since the moment equation is continuous, since there are no external couples acting on the system, the moment equation in this cross, in this cross section should match the moment equation at this point from the cross section one. And we have verified over here. That is, we have seen that these two moment equations match in each other in the sense that there are no discontinuities. Another test for the whole procedure is to take the first derivative of the moment equation. Namely, in any cross section, if there are no discontinuities, we will have that the first derivative of m over x should be actually the force v. Let's verify this for the section 1. In the section 1, this is the moment equation, and if we take the first derivative of m with respect to x, we will actually obtain b over l multiplying f. And that's precisely the value for the internal shear force. On the other hand, for the section S2, we will have dm over dx, and here's the equation. If we take the first derivative of this equation, we will actually obtain minus af over l. And that's precisely the value of the internal shear force in this cross section. And we can see that we have correctly draw this diagram and derived all the equations. Okay, that's all for today.